Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. We got the Skydio 2 here. We're gonna do a flight test with the controller. Here's the Skydio here. Got it all powered up. Got two batteries. And if you've missed a couple of my videos, I did a really in-depth unboxing on this, really inspecting it close up. And also an initial kind of follow me flight test where we went through the woods and we also followed my truck forerunner through the woods too, doing some off-roading. We can do it, we can do it! Son of a gun. If you missed those, go ahead and check the uh, playlist I'll have pop up here and they'll also be in the description down below. But today's gonna be all about flying the Skydio, trying to get some cinematic footage with the controller. You can fly it with the phone, you can fly it with the beacon, which I have in the case. Um, but this is, today's all gonna be about flying with the controller. So let's get started and see how it does. Okay, so I have everything already ready to go. On uh, this flight, I'm gonna just be recording in 4K, 30 frames per second HDR. In my follow test, I did 60 frames per second HDR. We're just gonna see how the 30 frames per second does in this one. So we'll go ahead and begin flight here. Starting Skydio autonomy engine. Takes a little while for this one to launch. Cameras may be blocked. Move Skydio to an open area. Okay, that was kind of interesting. I'm not sure what what that means. They definitely shouldn't be blocked. They should all be clear. There we go. Let's see if that worked. Okay, that seemed to do it. Just picking it up and rotating it seemed to do it. When you get your controller, all you need to do is plug the USB-C cable straight into your Skydio and it kind of binds it, a one-time binding. So all I had to do for this flight was turn on the Skydio flip open the controller and I already got a blue light. And then once I plugged in my Skydio app, went ahead and launched. I'll also be recording the screen too for you guys as well. So you guys can see what's going on on the screen. Anyway, let's get started. So let's go ahead and launch. Let's see if we can actually launch from this button on the controller. Definitely can't do that. So it looks like you do have to have your phone connected. Let's see if we do any of the normal kind of drone down, sticks down and in or down and out, if we can launch it. So we can't do that either. So we apparently have to launch just from the screen. So pressing until it launches. All right. So well, that guy's gonna launch up to what? Five feet, definitely higher than five. That's, yeah, it's about seven feet. You can see the telemetry up there on the left-hand side. Let's see if the controller is even working. Yeah, cool. So there's our yaw to the left. There's our right stick forward and back. Yeah, so definitely working. And this one starts to record right when you lift off, right guys? So keep that in mind. So let's just do a quick walk around on this guy. Uh, a little close up here. Definitely the control response is not as precision as some other drones, but anyway, that's it there. Hey guys, I hope you're staying super safe in these uncertain times we got the virus going on and stay away from people right now just take care of your family anyway that's it there let's go ahead and uh, fly around see how it is in just normal mode here I'm just going to kind of fly back and forth a bit and we're just really looking at the camera I'm trying to fly into myself and you can see how it's just totally avoiding me that's pretty cool Let's go down a little bit. Now this, the Skydio 2 is known for its amazing tracking and obstacle avoidance functions, right? So let's go down right into the center of me and I'm just gonna try to run into myself. So full forward. And of course it's gonna just avoid me just like it did with other stuff when we were doing that four by four section or session in the woods. So anyway, that's the maximum speed right now in whatever mode I'm in. This is just the default mode. So we can get some really good cinematic footage. And what's that, 10, 10 miles per hour is our forward speed. Let's try to do a punch out here. Okay, so really slow, kind of sluggish controls, but it's mainly for cinematic. Punching up. And we have uh, 
13, 14, 15, 16. Wow. 17 miles per hour going up. While we're up here, guys, let's take a look at this amazing um, West Maui here. Man, this camera is just fantastic. So this is HDR mode. The sun is kind of getting low in the sky. It's about 5.45 p.m. And let's just see what kind of maybe cinematic shots we can get with this with the controller. Just beautiful. Look at this. So you're going to get some great um, cinematic, especially with this HDR. Usually with other cameras, we get a really washed out uh, view. But look at that. You can still see the ground and the green there. And the clouds and that HDR is really pulling everything and brightening it up. Look at those colors. Fantastic. Let's just go ahead and this is camera all the way down. I think I adjusted the settings to be a little slower in the gimbal so you can do that. There's the field I'm at. We'll go up a little more. Fantastic. So we can be doing this with the controller. That's great. I really wanted to see how this thing would handle. Again, it does seem a little sluggish. Let's just go out a ways. Go straight out this way, flying FPV. I'm not really gonna do a range test in this one, but I just wanna see you know, if we can do some cool cinematics. So I'm turning the camera down and to the left here. I wanna try to maybe see if we can run into some trees too. That might be kinda of cool, huh? So I'm, I'm, I'm full stick down right now. It's coming down at, looks like eight miles per hour, okay? And here's what we'll do. We'll fly out that way a bit. Then I'll turn around and see what it does when we just come right into some trees, okay? So, we'll, whoa, we're already next to some trees there. So we'll go this way a bit. There I am through the trees, you can see me there. So we'll go to the left a little bit. And let's see if we just try to run right into this um, pine tree here. Let's see what it does. Okay, so full throttle straight ahead. And I'm gonna pull down. Yep, I'm still pushing forward. And look at that, it found the hole on its own. <laughs> All I was doing was pushing forward there. So pretty awesome. Working pretty good. As soon as I let off the sticks, now I have a cross on me. Let's try this. Press the cross. Okay, so now it thinks it wants to, you wanna track something. So just like before, we can do our tracking. It's still auto recording, cool and still having all that same kind of obstacle avoidance working very well. Let's see if I wanted to, what's it gonna do? Is it gonna stop? Yeah, so it's stopping by itself, kind of moving around on its own a little bit. I can't move the uh, head left and right with the yaw, but I can, I'll check this out. I can move the drone around. So I'm pressing full stick to the right right now and that's doing it, tracking me on its own. I'm gonna press up and I'm gonna pull out, pull back. So I'm up, I kinda wanna pull back to get a little more distance. No, wow, that's not working. So we're gonna have to push plus on the range, it looks like on the screen. Okay, well if you wanna track guys, um, that's as far as away as you can be, like 23 feet. I can do a circle as much as I want. So, you know, a little bit funny how you can't go farther out. Yeah, that's as far away as I can get. About 30 feet, okay? So remember when we we're tracking our truck and our forerunner and stuff, that's what was happening. So if I press this little um, icon to the right on motion track, we can also do fixed track. Let's see how this does. Okay, so if I move around here, you know, let me pull it around the other side. So the sun is brightening me up a little bit. 
There we go. So all I did was push to the left for that. All right. Cool. So there we go, a little bit brighter. And so what this will do, let me just get the height up a little bit, is as I'm moving, it's following me on a sideline. See that? So either way I go, and then you can, it looks like you can adjust your position by either pressing right or left like I did on the roll stick, or you see on the middle of the screen here, I can just do this, put, put it on the other side of me, or wherever I want. That's pretty neat. See how that works? Let's get it back over to this side. And remember, it'll have an easier time if uh, it knows which way you're going, but it doesn't know which way I'm gonna walk, right? So that's the whole thing about this one. All right, so that was a fixed track where it's just gonna stay there at that distance and heading and just try to keep you locked in. Okay. Let's try something else. We'll press on fixed track again. Let's try orbit. So remember we tried this again um, when we were doing the, our other truck and stuff tracking. So just a regular orbit and we have this slider on the bottom. Slide it all the way to the right. Eight revolutions per minute. Okay, that's its maximum speed. It's going about 12 miles per hour depending on where the wind, the wind's coming about five mile per hour that, from that direction. And then we can go slide it all the way on the other side and check it out. It'll change direction. And now it says negative eight revolutions per minute. But unfortunately I can't get any farther range. Okay, let's stop that. X out of that. Whoops, I still wanna follow myself though. Well, press on me again. Oh, it went right back into that orbit. Okay. So it's just going to continue on that until you, I guess, kind of... There we go. Okay. So let's get it back over. So the sun's on me again. So we can... Whoa. Oh, okay. That's cool. Check that out. So you can also use your right stick. And you see how just by pushing my right stick, it's changing that little slider, okay? So I'm gonna press that orbit and let's go down to cable cam. Set the A position of your cable cam. Let's see if we can go farther away. Okay, cool, now we can go farther away. So this is gonna be A position and I'm gonna press set A on the screen. And then I'm going to move the drone to my B position. I want to fly kind of right past me. And then I'm going to fly up and out through these trees. See that? And over there. Okay, so I'm going to set B right here. Let's bring our speed up to maybe 10. And from A to B, it's just saying waiting. Okay, let's see if we can click on A. Okay, there we go. So there's a cable cam and can I move the head around? No, I can't. I can't move the head, guys, interesting. So I guess you gotta fix, you gotta do your head however you want it to face. Okay, and then all you do is you can go from A to B. Let's, let's do our mile per hour up to 22. Let's see how fast it goes. So I can't move my head on the cable cam. Pressing the B arrow, boom. Watch this, it's gonna go fast this time. So just going from point A to B, I'll have this up on the screen. Let's see if we can adjust our gimbal. Nope, can't even adjust the gimbal. And it's just gonna stop, stop at B. Let's press X. Edit, okay, we can go into edit. Uh, let's edit our A position. All right, so now we need to come back. 
and we want to we have our B set way out there let's set our A let's see if we can avoid this tree while we're doing this yeah it's avoiding the tree we'll come in close and we'll have our um, B position right here this time I want to face the camera that way or that or A position right there so setting A now let's go from A to B boom whoa they really pulled back hard on that oh okay so it's remembering what position you set the camera on A and B so you see how it did a slow turn to the left and then ended up facing out so you can do some cool cable cam shots like that and it's, I mean, it's got such good obstacle avoidance, you don't have to worry about it crashing on anything, right? Let's go edit. Let's edit our B. I wanna edit lower. So it has to go like through these trees on its own. Okay, so I'm gonna go down here. And I'm even gonna go to the right a little bit. I'm gonna set B right there, boom. Okay, so let's go from A to B. Oh, nice. It just found that little crack in the trees. Okay, here we go. We're going to start it. So it did B to A. Now let's go A to B. Go. Look at that. It's looking all around it while it's it just curved around the trees. Oh, that's just fantastic. And I'll have that video up, right, guys? So you can see what's going on. Anyway, let's get out of this, guys. We'll just... Uh... How do we go back? It stopped, resume. We'll just go to um, A one more time so we're closer. This will be the third time I'm doing this. But it's just fantastic how it just finds the hole and just as it's pivoting and rotating. I don't know any other drone that can do that. That's just fantastic. Oh, there's my battery over there on the left. Okay, we're only 15%. So... Um, Stop, edit. Wow, I can even double tap the screen. Done. Snap to B. So it's doing all this on its own. What I don't really want to do is it for it to um, run out of battery over there. So I'm going to come on back. Quickly come back. <laughs> We're only at 11%, so we'll see how long this lasts. Okay, this is a little confusing because all I can do is edit and resume. So I'm just gonna click on cable down there to the bottom right. So then you have hover mode, which is just kind of like normal flying mode, I guess. And we're low battery, so it's gonna land in one minute, okay? Let's just say okay, and let's see what it does. We'll go up a little higher. I'm just gonna keep flying around, it's still recording. I'm just gonna try to stay away from my home point a ways and see what it does if it runs out of power, you know what I mean? Is it just gonna land? Are you gonna be able to control it still or what? Keep in mind, guys, I am on the side of a mountain, so you see that mountain slope there outside of the park. That's just the mountain. I'm just going to kind of fly around away from my home point. It says it only has 20 seconds of battery left. Let's see if I just keep forward motion. What happens? I'm just trying to stay away, see if it'll just land right there, if it'll come home. Six. Oh, cool. Keep flying or return. At least it gives you the op the option. Um, I didn't touch anything. Oh man, it's not letting me even control it. Is it? Yeah, so that could be very dangerous. Really want to just come home um, early on this one. Did you see that? I just, I could have pressed return, but I didn't for a few, a few seconds. 
and it just landed right here and I couldn't move forward. So, man, range tests are gonna be scary on this one, guys. Might not wanna do a range test. If we do, we're really gonna have to watch our battery power, you know? Anyway. Uh, let's go ahead and put the other battery in. We'll do some more functions and we'll try to return to home and see what the accuracy is. Brand new battery in and uh, let's just start this thing up. I don't think I showed you how to start it up the last time, but just click, click and hold until you see the blue lights in the front. There we go. Set that bad boy down. And uh, this one is kind of interesting. It takes a little while to boot up and there's not really any sounds you see the blue lights and then you'll see the camera kind of do its gimbal thing just like that and that's basically all you got you got no beeps or nothing anyway let's do this again with the second battery again i'll have the flight times pop up at the end as well so i didn't even change anything on the controller i just unplugged it and plugged it back in and it looks like it's all syncing up automatically so they've done a great job at detecting what kind of devices you have and them auto connecting and stuff so that's great let's see maybe if we can go into the settings and just really quickly see if we can speed anything up gimbal sensitivity flight sensitivity oh, okay yeah there's the custom so you could up this stuff if you wanted to um 25 percent boy let's just see if, if i go up to 50 percent on pitch roll and yaw if that gets us going a little faster i'll leave the throttle at 83 that might just be the sensitivity but let's just try that so that's basically it can't really do much let's go ahead and get this thing up and do a little bit more and then we'll do a pros and cons so begin flight it's going to do its starting autonomy engine again yeah cool look like the Gimbal was a little skewed, but when it starts up, it does straighten everything out. Man, look at that picture. Even on my phone, it just looks like so beautiful. All right, well, anyway, we're recording again. There's our maps. So you can do this um, the other way as well if you just have your phone and stuff. Apparently, my maps aren't coming in. There they go, slowly. See that? There we go. So it's just using, I guess, my phone data right now. And it's trying to pull in those Google Maps. You see how it's taking a while. Must not be a very good phone connection at the moment. Anyway, maybe a good idea to pre-cache your maps, pre-cache your maps before you've come to your flying location. Okay, well, click back on there and let's launch. So holding to launch again. I really do want to see the return to home accuracy, right? Man, that is just a beautiful picture. It is in motion track mode. So I think we kind of did everything. We'll just leave it in motion track mode. Oh, here's the one shots. Okay. Let me get this thing away from me so it's not entirely noisy. And I like how we don't have to worry about remembering to record. It just records when we launch. But let's just let's just go up here and just get this shot of this sun coming through the clouds. Just beautiful, isn't it? So it looks like you can get some very cinematic shots. Um, let's go into the motion track button. The top tab, one shots. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. Let's go droney. And it doesn't know where I am. So we're gonna need to come down and turn. So you're gonna need to do this kind of manually, right? Let's come closer. Okay, there we go. So this should be kind of a neat shot. Just come as close as we can. There we go knows where I am let's we'll settle in and then start droning so we get a three two one countdown there it goes so that's a five mile per hour out and up um, don't see anything else I can do there except adjust the speed so if I just max the speed while it's going 
Yeah, that just totally maxed the speed out. Woo, getting some camera shake coming back in. Did you see that? Pretty bad. So it switched to motion track. Let's try another droney. So it looks like you gotta go out of that and back into one shots every time. Let's try droney again. So it saw me, it's gonna get over there. Let's see if I can get some settings. Okay, here we go. Speed. Okay, so you can adjust these settings. You see this? I just had to hit those settings there. We'll go 100 feet away and then we'll go to 100 feet about. Cool. Press back arrow. I'm gonna walk up to it a little bit and let's start the droning. Let's see how this looks. Woohoo. Looks like I'm a little low in the picture, doesn't it? So that's at 16 miles per hour. Ooh, it lost the subject. Okay, so maybe that's why they make it have a close tracking of 30 feet limit. Because it looks like it will lose the subject, right? So that was it flying back on its own and everything. Okay, so that's droney. Looks like they can work on that a little bit. Back into one shots, let's do a rocket. Clicking on myself. Uh, let's bring it in. I can't move the head at all. Interesting. All I can do is forward and side to side. Let's let it do what it thinks it needs to do. I'm just going to leave it right there and start the rocket. Lay down here. Let's speed it up. 11 miles per hour. <laughs> Okay, so it looks like it just defaulted again. Get up. Let's try that again. One shots, rocket, settings. Okay, yeah, so we're gonna have to do the height again. We'll do a, a little over 100 there. And this time we'll go really fast, 18 miles per hour, okay? And start. Woo! There's a rocket. 18 miles per hour to 100 feet. Hey. And lost the subject. So it's kind of easy to lose a subject anywhere over like 30 feet. Keep that in mind. That's probably why, like I was saying. The, uh, when you're doing the follow me stuff, it doesn't let you go any farther away than that okay back to one shots let's try the boomerang right and if I walk up to it see it's avoiding me right this is great so I don't really I want to get over to this fence in these trees and see if it because the whole thing about this is to avoid things right let's get close Wow, it doesn't let me yaw, it just, it's going to track me. Okay, we're going to go in the settings for the boomerang. 100 feet. 13 miles per hour. And we'll just do clockwise. And start. See what it does. It's going to go out, up, coming in. Okay, let's see what it does in these trees. <laughs> It's trying to go out, but it sees the trees. Nice, okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm like a little low in the screen. Too bad the, the gimbal couldn't rotate down a little further, right? You see that in the video, guys? Just a little not centered, low. So maybe something they can work on. So that's the boomerang. I want to try one more. Too bad you're not still in one shots when that. It would be nice if it went back here, but you got to go back into motion track and then one shots. I want to go back into boomerang and I want to do the fastest speed. And let's try the other direction. Back. Start. Okay, here we go. Countdown. 
22 miles per hour. Woo! Going around the trees, above the trees. Yeah, I am barely in the picture. Uh, <laughs> what's up, Skydio? It knows where I am, but. So keep that in mind. Some gimbal picture set, uh, centering issues may arise. Boomerang complete. Then it just switches back to motion track. So maybe in a way that's good that it will still follow you and stuff. Back to one shots. Okay, there's my battery on the left. I have 59% battery. Let's try a vortex. And let's just do it right here in the middle of these trees. Just right on the fence here. We're coming close. All I can do is push forward, remember? And the camera does the turning for us. So, let's start our vortex after we check out some of these settings. Shape, wow, okay. Tornado, there's a disc, corkscrew, or tornado. I like the tornado. So leave it on tornado, go back. Style, let's do an extreme. And direction, let's leave it at clockwise or counterclockwise and start. I'm just going to sit here and we'll see what it does. I'm not even going to turn around. Maybe I will just to see if it hits the tree. <laughs> hey, it's avoiding the trees. Uh oh. All right, what are you going to do, man? You can go up. Now it's trying to go the other way. Wait, that's all it's going to do? Huh. I picked the extreme version of the Vortex, but that didn't work very well, did it? I didn't see the screen, but I think it just canceled out of that. Let's try again. Vortex. It's come down. It's coming a little closer. Okay, let's try our vortex again. Greater distance, higher speed, more revolutions. Looks like it failed on that one. Anyway, let's start it again. Start. This time I'm just gonna stay here. We'll try uh, clockwise the next time. See how it's kind of getting stuck in the trees and then it stops its entire, entire vortex? Got stuck, vortex stopped. Okay, so use the vortex, guys, in a um, more of an open area. You know me, I, I gotta try that one more time and I gotta do it the other way around. Let's go that way and start vortex three two one go come on vortex let's see if we can do it this time you can hear that bugger buzzing so it should be going up and out oh, oh that's too bad okay so don't do those kind of little quick shot things you know when you're Got trees around you, especially the vortex, I guess. Let's see if something else gets stuck. Let's try that boomerang and see if that has trouble. Remember that? I'm just going to leave the same settings I had. Okay. We'll come way low, so it has to avoid these trees. Start. Just gonna stay right here. All right, boomerang, go for it. Oh, nice. Okay, lost the subject. Mm, okay. So not so great um, when you're going through objects with these little selfie functions, right? Because once it loses track of you, 
it does have trouble. So I'll have had the video up of what that actually got, at least. Okay, so the one shots, be careful of those and obstacles. If you're gonna do it, maybe have the uh, member that beacon with you. If you're gonna have obstacles in your one shots. Let's try to do a return to home. So we're still recording. Let's go ahead and fly out here a bit. I'm just clicking on the screen to get out of there. Man, that is just beautiful with this camera. Absolutely fantastic. 32% power. Let's try something. I wanna get a neat shot of me just flying right through these trees. Let's see if it can do it. I'm just gonna push forward. I'm just full stick forward right now. Let's see if it can navigate. No, there's not really a big enough hole, so I'm gonna pull back. You see that? But at least it didn't hit any branches. That was great. Let's try this, a little bit more fair to it. I'm just gonna go right straight ahead through the top of those branches. See what it does straight ahead. Yeah, so it'll make sure it doesn't hit those. So that would have been a pretty cool shot. It's a little bit back and forth wavy, but I think it was just trying to avoid those trees. Let's do a pullback shot. Man, that is just beautiful, isn't it? Get our camera up a little bit. There we go. Now, if that's not cinematic, I don't know what is. I'm going to drop it down a little. Let's try to get one more of those shots. Right here. Go. Full stick forward. See what it does. Ooh. Just go up. Full stick forward still. Nope. It's kind of stuck. So these kind of situations, you're gonna to have to kind of push up yourself. Do you see that? A little bit of a weird gimbal tilt there. Anyway, let's pull down as we come back. Oh, that was neat. And the great thing about this though, is you don't really have to like look around you. The drone will just avoid everything, right? Let's go down low. No, I don't want to get in anybody's way. I don't want to do that. I wouldn't be responsible. So pretty cool, man. Um, all right, we're getting low on power, so I'm going to go to this other field over here. And just look at this camera. Let's get some nice shots here. I do want to get some pictures. I'm trying to get a picture of this. Where's my photos? 4K? Okay, here, I'm switching the pictures. Let's get some shots. Am I getting some photos? I don't know. It just says it's still recording. Oh well, well that's, I don't know, sorry about that guys, but I'm, <laughs> I'm hitting the photo button, but it, I don't think it's taking any photos. I'm going to um, press home from the launch point. There we go. So I told it to launch right back or land on that box right there. Let's see if it does. Whoa, come on. Come on home. It didn't seem to do anything, and then when I pressed the controller return to home, it did. Anyway, it's still recording, it's backing up. 10% power. Whoa, it's going way over there. Overshot a bit. I'm gonna get it really out of its way. Eh. 
It's just stopping there. I'm not sure if that's because it has this low battery warning. Anyway, at least it got, you know, close to where I am. But if I just bring it straight down, that's about 10 feet away, right? You see that? So, just really be careful about flying this thing to its battery capacity, you know what I mean? Just tilt the gimbal all the way down. Let's see if it can land right on that Skydio signal. <laughs> this might be tough. Right there. So this button on the controller doesn't seem to do anything, so you gotta press land on the screen. I'll hold it down. Ooh, oh. <laughs> it tried to land on the box, but the balance was a little off and you, you kind of saw what it did. At least it didn't um, freak out, flip over and keep going. So we'll have the flight time again pop up for those two flights in total. This one seems like it has maybe a little bit of like uh, expo where it's really light controls in the beginning and wishy-washy and then as you push it more it'll finally kind of go and i think they're doing that because um, they want it to be more cinematic with the cinematic shots and also it doesn't really matter if you have super precision control because it has this obstacle avoidance you can see how i was going through the trees and even the twigs with the sunlight straight at it it was stopping and not hitting the twigs so you still have that full-on obstacle avoidance while you're using the controller, which is really amazing. It seemed like it went faster when I remember I adjusted those settings in the controller up to 50%. I think they were at 15 initially or 20. And it seemed like when I um, adjusted those up, it was going a little faster. I forgot to check on that. It does, I mean, this thing follows you amazingly. A uh, couple negatives. Remember when we were trying to do that uh, tornado thing? It would be cool. I'm not sure if it would have kept doing it if i had the beacon on that would have been a good test so maybe in the next flight test we'll do that we're also going to do a range test but i just want to be careful because this thing um man it doesn't let you really control it once it goes into that forced landing so that was really scary but we are i'm going to try it i'm going to do a range test maybe a little safer one where i'm over an area where i can pick it up so we'll definitely try that out but as far as this hdr camera and just getting these cinematic shots with that like the sunset man those were just on my phone it was beautiful and i'll have those up on the drone itself this one's going to be a little bit of a noisier drone it does have like a you know kind of a medium tone to it but you know that's kind of be, to be expected with this one because it needs that power so the the props do have a pretty high pitch it needs that jolt of propulsion to avoid things and stop and stuff so one of the negatives i mentioned in my um, initial flight test with the tracking when i was doing that four wheeling was the flight time wasn't that great um, at the most i think i was getting like 16 to 18 minutes of flight time but anyway guys i hope you enjoyed that oh the pictures i don't know what went on with the pictures i tried stopping the recording and taking some pictures so if those are up i'll throw those up it's probably something I was doing wrong, but um, that's the way it was a little bit difficult. I was even trying to press the trigger buttons here and it didn't really seem to do anything. But anyways, thanks for watching and don't forget to check and tune in to the next couple of videos with this. I am going to do a range test. I'm going to do some more tracking and I do want to do a beacon test with those tornado selfie functions because I want to see if the beacon... It'll know where the beacon is and continue its tornado thing, even if it hit the trees. Because remember, it canceled with those and didn't know where I was with those trees. It just tried to come back to where it was. Anyways, um, links in the description for the Skydio 2 and also all the stuff I use on my videos. And I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.